Yes. So, like I've been doing in an academy, I thought I will make some PowerPoint presentation, but, um, <clears throat> okay, ready. But it is not complete. We will yes. finish everything in the coming days. Okay. Hello guys, sorry I've been away. Today we are starting revision. I'm starting with unit one drama. We will finish the first unit in a few days. Um, I will be just uh, revising a lot of things and then we will also, um, I have some question answers. I will add more question answers and we'll make it even better in the coming days. All right. So let us start. Are unit one poetry naya? What is this? Drama. Confusion I have created. Forget it. The beginnings, actually, I am talking about the poetry and the drama also mix up with this. I will set it right tomorrow. I am completely in a <laughs> Greek or Roman period we are starting with. And we are starting with uh, okay, right. The Greek or Roman period. We know that in the Greek or Roman period, there is the archaic period, which is the ancient period of Homer. Then there is a classical period, which is the period of the great tragedians, comedy writers, uh, philosophers like Plato and Aristotle. And then there is a Hellenistic period. Hellenistic period is the time when Greece was politically in its decline, but culturally it was dominant. Hellenistic period is the time when uh, Roman Empire had come into being and Roman Empire was following uh, Greek uh, classical values. Hello everyone, I'm just teaching because we, it, it has been so many days and uh, you must be waiting for me to teach. I am kind of okay, I'm getting better. So this is the time of Homer, Pindar, Virgil, Horace, Ovid, etc. Homer, we know, is the author of epics, um, Iliad and Odyssey. Pindar is the author of Pindaric Odes. Pindaric Odes are very elaborate formal odes. Virgil is a, the Roman writer who wrote Aeneid. He is also the writer of pastorals. Horace wrote poetry, satire, uh, then uh, criticism as poetica. Ovid wrote uh, stories of the exploits of heroes and gods in Metamorphoses. Homer, as you know, was a very ancient poet who lived in about um, 8th century BC. He was blind and a wandering poet, right? And he was the greatest of the earliest uh, Greek epic writers. Even if there were other epic writers, we don't know them. His contemporaries were there, Hesiod than Sappho. Sappho is a poet from Lesbos. I'm doing both discussion and rapid fire together, Saima. Uh, just one starting trouble, let me just... Start teach for one day and then it will be on track. Iliad is the uh, first epic. Iliad will uh, Iliad is remembered as the story of the Trojan War. The Trojan War took place over ten years, but the last uh, one week in the Trojan War is the main focus here. The fight between Achilles and Agamemnon. Both are Greek heroes, but they are fighting, and Achilles is refusing to go to the war to fight. And then um, his friend Patroclus is wounded by uh, Hector, the Trojan hero. And then Achilles is angry and he goes and kills Hector and drags his dead body through the battlefield for three days, denying him um, you know, burial. All that happened in uh, Iliad. So, 
Achilles is shown as a man with a lot of anger and uh, rigidness of character. That is bad, isn't it? Even later, uh, even people like Plato said, poetry is dangerous because Homer depicted heroes like that. And then among the poets, there is Pindar. I said drama, but I, today I'm talking about poetry. Um, Pindar is a lyric poet. He wrote Pindaric odes. As you know, Pindar is um, the author of odes that were written along with uh, the, the tragedies. In the tragedies, the choral odes were the Pindaric odes. And the Pindaric odes are a stanzaic form, strophe, antistrophe, and epode. This is according to the dance movements of the chorus. And then there was Virgil in Rome, who wrote Eclogues and Georgics. Who are, uh, Eclogues and Georgics are the, uh, where is your chat box? Are, I didn't show you the PowerPoint yet. yet. Yeah, I did. Uh, Eclogues and Georgics are the pa earliest pastoral poems. Eclogues and Georgics are the earliest pastoral poems. Then uh, Virgil also wrote Aeneid, which is the story of Aeneas founding Rome. Then Horace is there who wrote Horatian Odes, which are homostrophic, which means same stanzaic pattern throughout. Then there is Horace's satires, which are very moderate and mild. And Horace also wrote um, Carmen Secular, one important book. Then there is also the um, critical work Ars Poetica. The critical work Ars Poetica also came at this time. In Horace's time, there was not much criticism, but um, criticism was just beginning. You know, people were telling how to write uh, great poems, uh, mostly modeled on Aristotle. I just posted the Zoom link in uh, YouTube. So Horace's Ars Poetica was modeled on Aristotle and Ovid is the author of Ars Amatoria, which is like a Kama Sutra. And he also wrote uh, Metamorphoses. There is in recent times, a novel that has been written about Ovid in exile that is called An Imaginary Life by David Malouf. Talk about Old English poetry. The father of Old English was Cademan, uh, Kinewulf, Beowulf. Beowulf is not an author, of course, it is an epic. Cademan is the oldest uh, Old English poet. He wrote Cademan's hymn. And uh, Kinewulf is the author of, or Seinwulf, you can say, is also the author of many important um, poems that are remembered as part of Kinewulfian school. Cademonian school, Kinewulfian school, we say. Kinewulfian school poems are the fates of the apostles, Juliana, uh, the dream of the rood, Andreas, etc. Christ the second, etc. Beowulf is anonymous. It was, it is the oldest extant epic, probably written in the seventh century. Its manuscript dates from the tenth century. Cotton Vitellius or Novel Codex, that is the name of the manuscript. Beowulf is recently prescribed in universities. Textual details could be important. Then there were Old English elegies, seven Old English elegies. Dior, Wolf and Aid Waser. Wife's Lament, Husband's Message. The Ruin, The Wanderer, The Seafarer. These are elegies. And in Middle English period, there were chivalric romances and dream allegories. Remember Roman de la Rose by Guillaume de Lorizo and Jean de Mew is a very famous dream allegory. Chivalric romances include Sir Gawain and the Green Knight. 
are the Aryan romances that were written in the 12th century. Middle English period was the time of peasantry and three estates were the aristocracy, episcopacy and peasantry. And uh, there were many important events like the Black Death Peasants Revolt. Uh, and uh, important writers were uh, Chaucer, sorry, important writers were Chaucer and his contemporaries. We will come to all that. Shall I ask you some questions? Zoomers and YouTubers? What is this? Uh, I, I, I hope the voice is clear now. Are. I can't share and ask you question at the same time, I think. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, sorry. What is the metrical form of Iliad? What, what is the, please write in the chat box, Zoomers and uh, YouTubers. What is the metrical form of Iliad? Is it dactylic hexameter? trochaic hexameter or iambic pentameter. It is dactylic hexameter. Remember Aeneid, Iliad were all written in dactylic hexameter. That is the epic meter. Epic meter is dactylic hexameter. Remember? Then, who of the following wrote poems praising the winners in Olympic Games? Who of the following wrote poems praising the winners in Olympic Games? Is it Horace, Pindar or Ovid? It is indeed Pindar. It is Pindar. Pindar wrote Pindaric Odes. Some of his Pindaric Odes were Olympia, Olympic, Olympian Odes about the Olympic Games, right? Um, from tomorrow, I will make even more questions, okay? Today, in the last minute, one hour before only, I thought I will make PowerPoint and therefore I couldn't make a lot of questions. From tomorrow, I'll make a lot of questions, new, new questions, okay? What is the sword that Unferth presents Beowulf with to attack Grendel's mother? What is the sword that Unferth, Unferth is an important character in Beowulf. Is it Haranting, Glenworth or Skilled? What is the name of the sword that Beowulf is presented with? It is Hranting. Hranting is Beowulf's sword. Excalibur is Arthur's sword. Remember, that uh, these details are important. Hunting is the name of Beowulf's sword. Will you remember, guys? Then, which of the following is not true about Aeneid? It has 12 books. The first part is about Aeneas' journey from Greece to Italy. The second part is about the Trojans' victory over the Italians, leading to the founding of Rome. Do you see something wrong? It is B. The first part is about Aeneas's journey from Troy to Italy, not Greece. Aeneid has 12 books. The first part is about Aeneas's journey from Troy to Italy. The second part is about the Trojans' victory over the Italians leading to the founding of Rome. Will you remember? Uh, we will do more questions like this in every day we will do so that you will remember. Aeneid has 12 books. The first part is about Aeneas' journey from Troy to Italy. The second part is about the Trojans' victory over the Italians. And Aeneas founded Rome. Clear, guys? Okay. Now let us uh, have an overview of Geoffrey Chaucer. Chaucer, as you know, was born in 1340, in about 1340, and lived up to 1400. And uh, uh, he was the first poet of national importance, and his genius was recognized in all ages. His career has been divided into French period, Middle period, or Italian period, 
or French period, um, Italian period, and English period. Canterbury Tales was written at the end. From today, I'll be there every Monday to Friday, okay? Monday to Friday, every day we will have class. Saturday, Sunday, Abhi Mujay, for a few days, for one or two weeks, let me see. Uh, otherwise, uh, after that, let, if, I, if I can, I'll start. At least for one week, I can't. Okay. So, Geoffrey Chaucer's early period uh, is the time of translation of Roman de la Rose. Roman de la Rose uh, is a dream allegory. Roman de la Rose is written by Guillaume de Loris and Jean de Mew. And it has been translated by Geoffrey Chaucer as Romant of the Rose. Romant of the Rose or Romance of the Rose. And uh, after this, he wrote the Book of the Duchess. The Book of the Duchess is a book where Chaucer is uh, unable to, Chaucer is unable to sleep because he is lovesick. And uh, he is um, dreaming about a black knight. And the black knight is uh, grieving for his wife. This black knight could be John of Gaunt. And uh, Chaucer has written this is as a dream vision. It is the first of his dream visions. Written in octosyllabic couplets. <laughs> Chaucer wrote the Book of the Duchess in octosyllabic couplets. The Book of the Duchess is also called Dream of Chaucer. And John Lydgate wrote a reply uh, or a book based on it called Complaint of the Black Knight or Complaint of a Lover's Life. Everybody following? Uh, because I'm teaching, are you bored? Do you want more questions or is this okay? I have to... Um, the book of the Duchess, guys, remember, is written in octosyllabic couplets. Octosyllabic means eight feet only. Later, he introduced the decasyllabic couplet. Decasyllabic couplet means heroic couplet or iambic pentameter couplet, which is longer line. Octosyllabic is shorter line. Early works of Chaucer are in octosyllabic couplets. The book of the Duchess and... Um, it is uh, the basis for Lydgate's complaint of the black knight or complaint of a lover's life. And uh, the book uh, ends abruptly when a group of hunters come. After the book of the Duchess in the middle period, Chaucer wrote the house of fame. The house of fame is also unfinished dream allegory. And uh, there are, uh, from tomorrow we'll do more questions. Don't worry. Um, House of Fame has echoes of Ovid, Virgil, Dante. And Chaucer is dreaming. And he is dreaming that he's in a temple of glass. From the temple of glass, where there are pictures of famous warriors, he is going to a desert. And from there, he is carried away by a talking eagle. And he's dropped on a tower of ice, where there are so many names of famous people melting. And from the Tower of Ice, he entered a castle. That is the castle of fame. Fame is a woman with varying heights, many eyes, many tongues. And uh, from there, he enters a house made of sticks. It is the house of rumor. And uh, then Chaucer suddenly uh, wakes up. The book has been called a parody of Dante's Divine Comedy. This book has been called a parody of Dante's Divine Comedy. And uh, the next book that Chaucer wrote after House of Fame is The Parliament of Fowls. The Parliament of Fowls is also dream allegory. All these books, Book of the Duchess, House of Fame, Parliament of Fowls, all of them are uh, written in a dream allegory format. And uh, in Parliament of Fowls, Chaucer introduced iambic pentameter in seven-lined stanza. That is called Chaucerian stanza or rhyme royal. I am also happy to see all of you. I am seeing your messages. I am just teaching because the so many days have been lost. And um, no, no. From now, every day at 10 o'clock. Till now, I was not teaching because my health was seriously in trouble. 
but now I am okay, much better. I will be able to teach from Monday to Friday. I will teach this week. Next week, if possible, every day I will teach. Don't worry. Otherwise, Saturday also. Let me just uh, just starting trouble is there. <laughs> let me let me just come back on track. Okay. So Parliament of Fowls, I was talking about. It is the story of uh, birds choosing their mates. On St. Valentine's Day, it is set in the uh, Palace of Venus. Uh, the whole thing, the Temple of Venus, the whole thing is happening. Chaucer is, the Chaucerian dreamer is um, uh, guided by Africanus, a character from Cicero. Cicero's dream of Scipio, Chaucer was reading when he fell asleep. And uh, huh, SSB, Kelly, uh, I will just look at the syllabus and we will do accordingly. Okay, don't worry. So Parliament of Fowls is, uh, in Parliament of Fowls, Chaucer is guided by Africanus, who is a character from Cicero. And Chaucerian dreamer is, uh confessing to sorry not confessing uh the chaucerian uh, dreamer is talking about uh how in venus's palace the goddess of nature is overseeing the mating of birds the mating of birds is being overseen by the goddess of nature and uh, there are three eagles wanting male eagles wanting to marry one female eagle that is the story Next, he translated Consolation of Philosophy by Bothius. Bothius's Consolation of Philosophy he translated. Then he wrote Troilus and Crecide. It is the only finished poem by Chaucer, dedicated to O oh, Moral Gower. Troilus and Crecide is dedicated to O oh, Moral Gower. It is Chaucer's longest single poem. And um, it is uh, a poem that shows women in a bad light. As a compensation, he wrote The Legend of Good Women. The Legend of Good Women came presenting the stories of uh, nine. There are actually nine stories, but the stories of 10 women are there. He presents the stories of nine stories showing 10 women. They're all cheated by uh, wicked men. So in Legend of Good Women, um, there is a prologue and nine tales about good women being betrayed by wicked men. In the prologue, he says that uh, the God of love and his wife have, have asked him to write uh, this book. The God of love and his wife, the God of love and his wife Alciste have asked him to write this book, Legend of Good Women, he says. Uh, Chaucer also wrote Legend of St. Cecilia, Parliament and Our Society, Treatise on the Astrolabe, and then came the Canterbury Tales. Canterbury Tales. It is based uh, partly on Boccaccio's Decameron, and uh, it has a general prologue and 24 tales. 23 pilgrims tell stories, there are 24 tales. Uh, 29 pilgrims are meeting at Tabard Inn and telling one another stories on their way to Canterbury. They are on the way to the shrine of St. Thomas Becket at Canterbury. As you all know, uh, all the character, all the walks of life except the um, king and the, uh, the serfs and the uh, slaves, everybody else is presented. Uh, it starts with the knight's tale and ends with the parson's tale. There are so many characters who are described in Canterbury Tales. I will do one thing. Tomorrow I will do a recap. More questions we will do tomorrow from this section only. And then we will go on to the next section. All right. Now let me ask you a question. Bosi is a work translated by Chaucer into Middle English from Latin. Who's the original author? Tell me the answer. B-O-E-C-E -E is the name of a book translated by Chaucer into Middle English from Latin. Who is the original author? It is.
there are 29 pilgrims plus Chaucer plus Harry Bailey. That means 31 pilgrims in all. It is Bothius. Bothius's Consolation of Philosophy is translated into Middle English and it is called B-O-E-C-E. -E. Did you understand? Bothius's Consolation of Philosophy. Somebody was asking me about Canterbury Tales. Once more, let me explain. In Canterbury Tales, there are 29 pilgrims plus Chaucer plus the host Harry Bailey. So 31 pilgrims in all. Did you get that right, guys? When I'm sharing my screen. Are YouTubers, Zoomers? Some of you got it wrong. Doesn't matter. Now, next question to you. Which of the following is not true about Chaucer's Parliament of Fowls? Which of the following is not true about Chaucer's Parliament of Fowls? <laughs> it is a dream vision in heroic couplets. It is set on St. Valentine's Day. Scipio's Africanus is the narrator's guide. Scipio Africanus is the narrator's guide. Tell which of the following is not true about Chaucer's Parliament of Fowls. It is the first one. It is a dream. Parliament of Fowls is not in heroic couplets. It is in Chaucerian stanza or rhyme royal. It is a dream vision in rhyme royal or Chaucerian stanza. Heroic couplet is wrong. It is set on St. Valentine's Day. Correct. Scipio Africanus is the narrator's guide. Correct. So Chaucer's Parliament of Fowls is set, is a dream vision in rhyme royal or uh, Chaucerian stanza. Uh, it is set on St. Valentine's Day. Scipio Africanus is the narrator's guide. Shall I ask you the next question? How many lines of the prologue is the setting of the Canterbury tale in how many lines of the prologue is the setting of the Canterbury tales described? It's an important question because the first so many lines are considered like a separate section in the Canterbury tales. It is the first 18 lines. The first 18 lines of the Canterbury Tales are the setting. That is considered a separate section. The first 18 lines is, is like a separate section. Remember that. 12, 16, 18. The first 18 lines is like a separate section. It describes the setting of the Canterbury Tales. Don't forget that. And gladly would, would, would he learn and gladly teach. This line describes whom? That is easy. And gladly would he learn and gladly teach. Please look up the excerpts or famous quotes from all important books that you have to study. Will you remember? It is Clerk of Oxford. And gladly would he learn and gladly teach. This line describes the Clerk of Oxford. He was very glad to teach and he prayed for people who helped him learn. He had around 20 books. He loved Aristotle's logic. He studied books on Aristotle's logic. And uh, he did not care for anything but learning. That is the meaning. It is a slight uh, satire. Chaucer's contemporaries next. William Langland uh, lived from 1332 to 1386. He was the author of The Vision of Pius the Plowman. The vision of Pius the Plowman is a very important uh, text of this period, as you know. It is written in passes or steps. Passes or steps, that is the, uh, you know, stanza division. It has two main parts, Visio and Vita. Vision of Pius the Plowman has two main parts, Visio and Vita. Uh, the, the, there are 20 passes and the uh, narrator falls asleep and sees the world from Malvern Hills. He sees a series of dream visions and important characters include do well, do bet, do best. Then uh, Pius is uh, indistinguishable from Christ at the end. 
etc john gower another contemporary of chaucer was a very illustrious man he was a very uh, powerful man and uh, he wrote only in french and latin first in french he wrote speculum meditandus in latin he wrote vox clamantis Chaucer's Troilus and Cressid is dedicated to Gower, remember? And uh, Gower uh, wrote Speculum Meditandis in the manner of a French allegory. It was an ambitious poem um, talking about Christ and Virgin. Vox Clementis uh, is about the clergy. It is uh, about the peasants' revolt also. And then uh, Gower says that King Richard II asked him to write something in English. So he wrote Confession Amantis. Confession Amantis means the confession of a lover. It is subtitled Tales of the Seven Deadly Sins. It has a plan borrowed from Roman de la Rose. It's in the form of a dialogue between the poet lover and Venus, sorry, Venus's deputy genius. First, poet lover and Venus are talking. Then, poet lover is confessing to genius. And the seven deadly sins are illustrated with a story each. That is Confessio Amantis. And uh, it is written in the form of a confession or consolation in the manner of Bothius's consolation of philosophy. Then there is John Wycliffe, leader of the Lollards. He was called Morning Star of the Reformation. He translated the Bible and wrote other uh, religious works also. There was another poet during this time whose name we don't know his name. We are calling him Pearl Poet. Then there were Chaucerians. There were Scottish Chaucerians and English Chaucerians. English Chaucerians include John Lydgate. The Scottish Chaucerians were called Macars. And the Scottish Chaucerians include William Dunbar, Robert Henderson and King James I himself. King James I of Scotland was a Scottish Chaucerian. Uh, there were in the 15th century ballads written. Ballads were written in the 15th century. Ballads like Sir Patrick Spence, the wife of us ushers, well, Nut Brown Maid, uh, Chevy Chase, etc. They were important ballads. Now, are you ready for some questions, guys? I will ask you some questions. Will you please like the video, guys? According to its preface, Confessio Amantis was written at the request of YouTubers and Zoomers. According to its preface, Confessio Amantis was written at the request of Richard the second, that is right. Richard the second, King Richard the second asked him to write. Look at the poet confessing to genius. Genius is like a nun. Now, Wycliffe's Bible is now understood to be the work of several scholars. Who among the following worked with Wycliffe? Geoffrey of Monmouth, Nicholas of Hereford, Launcelot Andrews. Bolo. Zoomers, it is, it is not Geoffrey of Monmouth. He was an old English historian. Geoffrey of Monmouth was an old English historian. It is Nicholas of Hereford. Nicholas of Hereford worked with Wycliffe. Launcelot Andrews worked on the authorized version of the Bible. Launcelot Andrews was an important figure in the authorized version of the Bible. Will you remember, guys? Don't uh, make a mistake. Launcelot Andrews, authorized version of the Bible. Which of these poems begins on Malvern Hills? Is it Pius Plowman, Specula Meditandis, or Vox Clementis? All of you would know. It is easy. I have told you also. You would also know otherwise. The dreamer is sleeping on Malvern Hills, looking down at the valley, a field full of fog. On one side, there is the Tower of Ra, uh, Tower of Truth. Uh, the other side, the Dungeon of Wrong. It is in 
Pius Plowman. Mal Malvern Hills is in Pius Plowman. Now, William Shakespeare. Ready for William Shakespeare, guys? William Shakespeare has written 37 plays, 154 sonnets, and two or four long poems. Right? There are so many um, plays that they can ask you from. There are so many questions they can ask you from. I have put only a few questions in the slides, but I want to ask you some questions now instead of just teaching you. How many texts of Shakespeare were printed? Let me just um, remove the share so that I can use. Sorry, I don't look at the question yet. Um, Zoomers, answer me. For some time, you look at me, okay? After that, I will remove my face and put the PowerPoint. Uh, tell me, guys. How many plays of Shakespeare were printed individually in Shakespeare's lifetime? How many uh, plays of Shakespeare? Zoomers and YouTubers? Are, 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 think again, think again. How many plays of Shakespeare were printed individually in Shakespeare's lifetime? It is 16. 16 of Shakespeare's plays were printed individually. All 37 were not printed individually in his lifetime. 13, sorry, 16 of Shakespeare's plays were printed individually. In quarto editions. And then first folio came. First folio had 36 plays only. 36 plays only. Did you understand, guys? 16 of Shakespeare's plays were printed individually. And uh, first folio is the complete works of Shakespeare. Uh, the quarto edition of Shakespeare's sonnets were published in which year? Tell me. The quarto edition of Shakespeare's sonnets were published in which year? That is right. 16, not 9. The quarto edition of Shakespeare's sonnets were published in 1609. The first of Shakespeare editions of the 18th century came in 1709. That is Nicholas Rose edition. Nicholas Rose edition. Will you remember? Now quarto is half. Uh, quarto is half uh, the size of folio. Quarto is half the size of folio. Remember that. Uh, let me ask you more questions about Shakespeare and which of Goethe's plays had Shakespearean overtones? Which of Goethe's plays had Shakespearean overtones? It is Gods of the Iron Hands. Gods of the Iron Hand. G-O-T-Z. Uh, Gods of the Iron Hands. That's right. Then... Um, who are the people who compiled the first folio? The people who compiled the first folio? Heminge and Condell. Heminge and Condell, correct. Uh, Heminge and Condell. YouTubers, then uh, tell me, uh, who are the classical masters for Shakespearean comedy? Who are the classical masters for Shakespearean comedy? Plotus and Terence is correct. Plotus and Terence, correct. Then tell me, uh, who called Shakespeare's sonnets sugared sonnets? Who called Shakespeare's sonnets sugared sonnets? It is um, Fra uh, Francis Mayers, M-E-R-E-S who wrote Palladis Tamia. Francis Mayers, who wrote Palladis Tamia. Who was the owner of the Globe Theatre? Who was the owner of the Globe Theatre? James Burbage. James Burbage was the owner of the uh, Globe Theatre. Which is the 
which is probably the first play by Shakespeare about uh, the king of Navarre and his three friends falling in love with the princess of France and her friends. The king of Navarre and his friends fall in love with the princess of France and her friends. It is the story called Love's Labors Lost. It is the play Love's Labors Lost. One major uh, source of uh, uh, Shakespeare, one major source of Shakespeare is Palace of Pleasure. Do you know who is the author of Palace of Pleasure? Palace of Pleasure is written by William Painter. William Painter. Will you remember that? Um, uh, what is the source of the history plays of Shakespeare? The Chronicles of Hollinshed and Hall. English history plays of Shakespeare are based on the Chronicles of Hollinshed and Hall. Plutarch's Lives is the, um, you know, source for uh, Roman plays. Plutarch's Lives is the source for Roman plays. Will you remember? Then, um, which are the uh, dark comedies of Shakespeare? Which are the dark comedies of Shakespeare? All is well that ends well. Measure for measure, Troilus and Cressida. All is well that ends well. Measure for measure, Troilus and Cressida. Right? Who called the dark comedies problem place? Who called the dark comedies problem place? F.S. Boas. F.S. Boas called the dark comedies problem place. Which play of Shakespeare is also titled All is True? Which play of uh, Shakespeare is also titled All is True? It is Henry VIII. Nay, nay, nay. Henry VIII is also titled All is True. Henry VIII was probably written in collaboration with John Fletcher. Henry VIII probably written in collaboration with John Fletcher. Who wrote the book uh, Shakespeare's History Plays? Who wrote the book Shakespeare's History Plays? E.M.W. Tilliard. E.M.W. Tilliard wrote the book Shakespeare's History Plays. Will you remember that? Which are uh, the which is the comedy where Falstaff is a character? The comedy where Falstaff is a character. Comedy. The Merry Wives of Windsor. The Merry Wives of Windsor is where Falstaff is a character. Falstaff is usually a character in uh, history plays in Henry the Fourth parts one and two. But in Mary Wise of Windsor also, Falstaff is a character. Now I'm going to tell you characters. You tell me which is the work. Okay. Touchstone. 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 As you like it, correct. Touch stone is in as you like it. Then um, Don Pedro and Don John. Don Pedro and Don John. Don Pedro and Don John. They are in much ado about nothing. That is right. Much ado about nothing. Then um, Titania. Titania. A Midsummer Night's Dream. Volumnia and Virgilia. Volumnia and Virgilia.
they are in coriolanus coriolanus as mother is volumnia wife is virgilia okay then um, antiphalus of syracuse and antiphalus of ephesus antiphalus of syracuse and antiphalus of ephesus they are in comedy of errors comedy of errors then uh, sebastian and antonio are there in tempest in which other place sebastian and antonio are there antonio is a ship's captain and sebastian is rescued by antonio sebastian and antonio are in 12th night 12th night sebastian is viola's brother sebastian is um, uh, rescued by antonio antonio is prospero's brother and sebastian is alonso's brother in tempest also will you remember guys now uh, let me show you my powerpoint tararang question why then tis none to you for there is nothing either good or bad but thinking makes it so to me it is a prison who says this in a shakespearean play why then it is none to you for there is nothing either good or bad but thinking makes it so it is who said hamlet to me it is a prison he is talking about denmark to me it is a prison he is talking about denmark what is past is prologue who says this in a shakespearean play what is past is prologue who says this antonio says this in the tempest antonio is the villain in the tempest antonio says i have already usurped the prospero that is only the prologue now sebastian should kill alonso that is the main story that is coming antonio is the villain now he is in an island they don't know how to survive they are all going to die probably in the island they don't know what will happen and there antonio is hatching his evil plot look at the irony it is almost like aliban and trinculo and sebastian uh, sorry stefano hatching evil plot against prospero so it is antonio in the tempest who says what is past is prologue the fool doth think he is wise but the wise man knows himself to be a fool who says this the fool doth think he is wise but the wise man knows himself to be a fool who says this is it it is touchstone in as you like it guys if you like these questions i will make so many more questions like this in the coming days we will do a lot like this covering everything then you will be able to remember won't you i will make very intelligent questions also <laughs> okay right it is touchstone in as you like it the fool doth think he is wise but the wise man knows himself to be a fool i kissed thee or i killed thee no way but this killing myself to die upon a kiss easy everybody will answer yes yes i will make i will make everybody is saying make make i kissed the or i killed the no way but this killing myself to die upon a kiss it is famously othello it is othello othello's last speech this is othello's dying just before he kills himself his speech now uh, shakespeare's contemporaries uh, philip sidney wrote astrophel and stella it's a group it's a collection of 108 sonnets and 11 songs edmund spenser wrote all these works 
the shepherd's calendar it is a group of 12 eclogues one for each month fairy queen first three parts of fairy queen published in 1590 all six parts of fairy queen published together in 1596 then complaints colin clouds come home again amority and epithalamian prothalamian four hymns a view of the present state of ireland in udemy there is shakespeare class i will add more also uh, which of these poems begins with the invocation to ye learned sisters which of these poems begins with the invocation to ye learned sisters it is prothalamian it is prothalamian sorry epithalamian epithalamian prothalamian begins calm was the day it is epithalamian ye learned sisters he is referring to the muses it is invocation at the beginning of epithalamian will you remember then which sonnet sequence begins with a sonnet that ends thus fool said my muse to me look in thy heart and write fool said my muse to me look in thy heart and write this sonnet sequence is more about the sufferings of the lover than about love this sonnet sequence is more about the sufferings of the lover than about love many of you got it right it is astrophel and stella fool said my muse to me look in thy heart and write it is astrophel and stella that is the ending of the first sonnet the character dash in fairy queen represents the unity of truth with the one church is it archimago una or red cross knight that is also easy i guess the character of fairy queen who represents the unity of truth with the one church it is una the name una itself means unity una is true church in the first book of fairy queen una is clad in white and she is uh, searching for red cross knight to save her her parents are imprisoned and una's enemy is duessa duessa represents mary queen of scots duessa represents mary queen of scots will you remember una is true church the unity of truth with one church then i have made for shakespeare's contemporaries also do you think i should add more questions and we'll do this from here tomorrow what do you say zoomers okay if i overdo it i may i may become bedridden so uh, it is better i don't overdo it slowly slowly i should increase then my body my body is still very weak because of something that happened and um, i'm getting better um, first paper you want i am not very good at first paper uh, i i will i will do something i will uh, help you with first paper also don't worry okay i will learn first paper and teach you otherwise i can also bring uh, some uh, people who are good at first paper to do with us would you would you like that we will do something one one or the other will do okay 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 एस एस बी के बारे में भी हम करते हैं रूपेश आई ऑलरेडी नो अबाउट एस एस बी बट विल यू वंस अगेन सेंड मी द्वेश्चन क्वेश्चन पेपर और सिलेबस एंड एवरीथिंग वी विल इनकॉर्पोरेट दैट विथ दिस ओके वन और टू डेज एटलीस्ट वील कंप्लीटली डिवोट टू इट ओके ओके देन आई विल एक्सप्लेन जी ओके सो थैंक यू गाइज टूडे आई एम नॉट ओवर डूइंग इट स्लोली टूमोरो आई विल सिट एंड मेक मोर क्वेश्चन and uh, recap also all these covered areas we will do and uh, we will uh, increase more and more as we come near the exam it will be awesome thank you so much for waiting for me thank you so much for uh, coming and listening to me and encouraging me uh, your prayers and your encouragement means more than you can imagine more than what i gain from you what you gain from me actually i am gaining from you 
I know that so many things are miraculously getting solved about health and everything because of your prayers. I know. Uh, thank you so much. And that you are there waiting for me, that you appreciate whatever I do. It is so good. Uh, ayo, one thing, let, shall I just show you one thing, guys? It is about our Unacademy. Uh, these are the courses that I'm doing in Unacademy. One is a complete four month course. If you join now, you will get all the videos from before and you will get uh, the PDF also that is very, very important. Everything, including lots of MCQs you will get. You can join me for three, four months if you want. Then uh, there is a crash course that I'm doing through MCQs. Every day we are doing like 40, 50, 80, like that number of MCQs and we are discussing. It is helping everybody. If you join, you can get that also. In Unacademy, you subscribe and uh, for, for the number of months that you subscribe, you can attend any class there. Then uh, at, from tomorrow, I'm starting literary terms discussion uh, in Unacademy special. So everybody can join without subscription also. Tomorrow, please join me. Mm, I don't know the time. Uh, what is the time? Um, anybody knows? <laughs> when you join me, uh, we will cover all these uh, MCQs. Just give me a minute. I'm so stupid, I think. <laughs> In an academy, three, not 3 p.m. Um, oh my God, will people believe this? I don't even know when it is. Ha, 7 p.m., 7 p.m. it is. It is 7 p.m. Uh, every day, but not every day, for five days, it will be intensive uh, coverage of uh, literary terms with PowerPoint. That also you will be able to download from special app. So an academy special, download Karo or please join me at 7 p.m. every day. Not every day, tomorrow and then after that, I'll tell you. Then there is a price hike that is going to happen. If you subscribe today, you will beat it. The, otherwise, the price will increase, they told me. So I'm telling you that if you want, um, you can subscribe today so that uh, you can save some money. Anyway, you have to join me at 7 p.m. tomorrow. Uh, I will make an awesome PPT and we'll do it. And after that, at 10 o'clock, we'll meet. Okay, there are so many questions still uh, remaining to be done. So thank you very much. See you tomorrow at 7 p.m. in an academy special and after that at 10 p.m. as usual here. Uh, duration of crash course is up to net exam. Um, if you know, uh, after that I will continue complete course and I will start more courses also. Crash course, I'm, I'm Maharashtra set and uh, West Bengal set and all these are coming right. So I will start more crash courses in different ways. So. I, luckily, God has made me creative. There are so many ideas that I have to uh, make it easy and good for you. What are you asking? Well, what is analytical reasoning? Higher order comprehension based on reading text. I will tell you tomorrow. I have to look it up. I only know how to read a text and answer it. I did my MA a few years back and I have got out of touch with the syllabus. Considering me a fresher, how long would it take for me to go for net? At least four, four or five months, if possible. It all depends on your caliber, the, the time that you devote uh, and things like that. I, analytical reasoning and higher order comprehension, all these technical words, I don't know actually. About comprehension, I only know how to read a, a, a passage and answer. But uh, tomorrow I will explain it. I will look it up today and explain it tomorrow. Uh, I will take it seriously. Please join me tomorrow also, will you? Higher, sorry, analytical reasoning, I know that. Um, and higher order comprehension, okay. Thank you, so good night. Thank you, tomorrow uh, in Karnataka, what is there? There is notification uh, going to take place next month. Everything I'm there, don't worry. 
what device do you mean i'm using i'm using what laptop okay uh, so whatever notification uh, exams are there just let me know we will solve everything uh, timing to join my classes in an academy i teach at one o'clock three o'clock sometimes seven o'clock uh, you can watch the videos later also uh, in youtube my our youtube channel 10 pm every day tomorrow onwards for a few days there will be uh, an academy special literary terms all right okay so bye bye good night white colored one oh this this is a mic this is a mic it is just a mic good mic okay thank you good night god bless you see you tomorrow